Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery. Uh, today I'm going to show you, as part of a flight planning exercise, how to determine the actual course heading you're going to fly, as indicated on the heading indicator or your magnetic compass, um, by initially coming up with the true course heading and then correcting for wind correction, then correcting for magnetic variation, and then finally compass deviation till we get to the actual course heading we're going to fly. So follow along. In this exercise as part of cross-country flight planning uh, from Laconia Airport to Auburn Lewiston, Maine, we're going to determine our course heading to actually fly. Uh, this is what we would see on the directional gyro or heading indicator as we fly. Um, in order to determine this course heading, we need to compensate uh, for wind correction, magnetic variation, and compass deviation uh, relative to the initial true course route that we determine um, when looking at the sectional map. So I've already determined what my course heading has to be when departing Lacone Airport. Now the next step is determining the course heading um, at altitude, cruise altitude, 5,500 feet in this case. The winds at that altitude are forecast to be 280 at 17 knots with the temperature 10 degrees C. And so what our goal here is now to determine what the course heading needs to be when flying at 5,500 feet on our cruise altitude. So we're going to use our E6B whiz wheel uh, to first determine the wind correction that we need to deal with. So again, what we're going to do is determine the wind correction error that we have to factor in for this trip uh, at cruise altitude of 5,500. So all we have to do is use the E6B whiz, rule, uh, whiz wheel instructions that are very well spelled out right up here at the top. The first thing it asks us to do is set the wind direction under the true index. I have already gone ahead and I've set the uh, wind, uh, wind direction, which is 280, underneath the true index. Then it says mark the wind velocity up from the center point. This is our center point. Also, I call it a grommet. I'm going to set my wind, set my wind correction um, grommet center point at the 100 mark because it's easier to, to make um, estimates uh, on the marks uh, using that as a common reference point. The wind was 17 knots so I'm going to go up here there's 10 there's 20 so I'm going to make a mark at 17 at 17 on the whiz wheel. Alright now that I've established my mark the next instruction is set the true course under the true index. The true course here is 59 degrees. And there it is, there's my 59 degrees. And uh, the, next question, the next requirement is slide the wind velocity mark that we made to the true airspeed. Well, the true airspeed we said was 110 knots at our cruise. So put the. So we have our mark at the 110 knot line here on the whiz wheel. Now, the first thing we want to note is, what is your ground speed? Ground speed reads underneath the center point, or grommet. So it looks like it's about, oh, about 121 knots ground speed. We'll make a note of that on our chart. And we'll go ahead and we'll just put that right here. It's going to be that number, 121 knots, for the duration of the flight. So next, we need to account for the error associated with the wind correction. So we look at the center line here and we count two, four, about six degrees um, left of the center line. And we're going to put that six degrees right here in the chart. And as you can see here, the mark is to the left of the center line. So we're going to put a minus sign here. As indicated here, minus if it's on the left, plus if it's on the right. We'll subtract that out, and we get 53. And so now that we've compensated our course heading for wind correction, we now need to determine the amount of magnetic variation we have to deal with. This is our route from Laconi Airport to Auburn Lewiston um, in four flight. What I'm looking for is that magenta line right there, this magenta dashed line. This is an isogonic line. 
And I'm going to go up here to see a number here. There I do. I see 15 degrees west. So we're going to add that 15 degrees or subtract. We need to determine first here. We're going to put that 15 degrees in the table uh, right here. So it said west, so we're going to add plus 15. So that gives us 63. That gives us 68. Okay, so accounting for uh, magnetic lines of variation, we have a magnetic heading of 68 degrees. Now the last thing we have to look at is what is our compass deviation. We can check out our compass deviation errors by looking at the deviation card associated with the compass. Uh, I know in the case uh, for the compass that we're using in our aircraft and the heading that we're roughly on, it's about two degrees. So we're going to put plus two, and this means we're going to fly a heading, a course heading in the end, of 70. And that is the heading, the course heading that we're actually going to fly when in the aircraft um, in steering uh, toward Auburn Lewiston. We're going to actually show a 70 uh, in the directional gyro heading indicator um, as we fly that course. So that's all there is to it to determine your actual course heading that you're going to fly relative to the true heading that you initially got when you were reading your sectional. You just need to account for the wind correction angle error, the magnetic variation, your isogonic lines that are relative to the um, area that you're flying over, and then lastly, your compass deviation. You factor all those error in, you come up with a course heading that you're actually going to fly, the heading that you see on your directional gyro as you're flying the aircraft. So hopefully this video was helpful. If so, consider clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the notification bell so you get notified on my next video.